good day. Everybody good? Amen. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash company of brothers dot PDF. All right. So we're going to just deal with it. We're a company of brothers. That's what we are. We, um, there are resources here. There's strength here. Pretty much everything we need as men is in this company. Amen. That's what the company is for. This is why Jesus established the church. And this is why he um, established leadership of the church and administered gifts unto the church because he knew the time would come when we would need all of that and it would become essential to survive. Amen? Amen. You know, we spent many years in the, the glory times, the, mega, the age of the mega church where folks were just piling in there to make the pastor rich. And those kind of things, just they, they're not going to endure the coming trials and tribulations that are being unleashed on people, period. Not just church people, but just people. All the things that are coming. So those kinds of selfish uh, organizations and antics and churches that are formed for the wrong reasons, it's just going to be very hard for them to be sustained in this hour. Um, but we know that God is going to have his remnant. Amen? He's going to have his remnant. The remnant's going to be rare now. The remnant's not going to be on every street corner. But he's going to have his remnant. And he's going to bless his church. Amen? Amen? Anybody been blessed since you've been here? <laughs> you can honestly look at who you were before you got here and compare that to who you are now and say that because I plugged in this fellowship, God has done things for me. Can you really say that? Yes. Yeah, it's just... And we can't, we can't forget that. We can't forget that. Um, I believe I'm blessed because I preached the gospel to you. And I believe you're blessed because you hear it and you know it's the truth. And so that's what's going to sustain us. The truth is what's going to sustain us to the end. And so being a part of a fellowship, um, even more important, a fellowship where there are men so we can be in the company of brothers. Amen? Amen? This is very rare to have this many men in this size church. This is a high percentile in this church. I mean, in, in the church with the amount of people we have. So this is just a blessing to see. This is something I've always wanted to see. Amen. I don't want to pass no church full of women. Amen. Amen. The warfare ain't the same as it is with men. The strength isn't the same. Amen? Amen. All right. So anyway, we're going to get started with this. So let's, uh, well, I'm going backwards. Here we go. A real man is made in the company of men. Y'all believe that? A real man. A solid dude is made in the company of solid dudes. Amen? Yeah. Women were created to support a man, not condition him. And when I say support, I ain't talking about financial. I'm talking about help meet. She was created to be the help meet, not a conditioner of a man. We were not meant to be conditioned by women. Amen. Women will have us as men thinking like women, communicating like women, making decisions like women. And that's, that wasn't what God made a woman for. He did not make a woman for that reason. Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So, she was created to be the helpmeet to the man, not to condition him. Everything got messed up when the woman conditioned the man. In the garden, she conditioned him. She got in his head. And she, the Bible says, 
she ate of the tree, disobeyed God, and caused the man to disobey God. Amen. So we're dealing with something that's been happening for a long time. The wrong, look at somebody and say the wrong woman. The wrong woman will make you do what you're not supposed to do. Amen. Can I preach in here? Can I be honest? Amen. So, a woman's supposed to be a help meet, not a, not a conditioner of a man. Man, I keep hitting the wrong button. Here we go. You must grant men the opportunity to check you and correct you. You got to give them that opportunity. That's what's wrong with this world now. Men can't be corrected. They put themselves in positions where they don't have to ever be challenged. Yeah. They don't like correction. But you have to grant that to someone. Yeah. You have to decide. I'm going to place myself in a situation where I can be corrected. Y'all don't believe that? Yeah. As a pastor of this church, I could do what some other pastors do and just be claim an autonomous existence where I only answer to me and I and can't none of y'all tell me nothing. I could do that because a lot of pastors do. But I don't feel like that would benefit you. So I place men in my life that can correct me. Yeah, and rebuke me. And because they old, they get harsh too. And call you out of your name. An old man will call you out your name. <laughs> yeah, okay. But that's my choice. I choose to do that because I, I don't want to be where nobody can tell me what to do. Every man needs somebody that can tell him what to do. Amen? Amen. And, you know, contentious women, Jezebel women, they don't want their husband under a man telling them what to do because they want to tell you what to do. Because the first thing a strong man will do that you get under is tell you to check her. And so she, you know, that's when they like, no, nope, they want to get you from under authority always so that you will be under her authority amen? amen but a real woman would think and say if he just out here with nobody to tell him what to do that don't help the house I, that don't help the house amen i know i'm preaching y'all you all can look like you want to but you got to grant man the opportunity. So you have to decide, this is what I want for my life. I want to give the permission to be corrected to someone. Always remain in the company of strong men instead of retreating to the opinion of women. Always remain in the company of strong men instead of retreating to the opinion. Of women. Proverbs 27 and 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Did it say woman anywhere in that? Did it say her friend anywhere in that? No, because women aren't iron. The Bible said they are the weaker vessel. And I don't want no woman that's iron. Nobody want to be getting whipped and thrown around and like you sleeping with a rock? I don't need no... <laughs> no, the Bible is specific in this passage. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Amen. Not no female friend. 
that wouldn't be iron sharpening iron. It didn't say iron softeneth. <laughs> no, it's specific. Iron sharpeneth iron. Amen. Amen. Commanding a woman to submit means that she doesn't see you for what and who you are. You should never have to command a woman to submit. That's not going to get submission. That's going to get a fight. Amen. We don't command a woman to submit. That means, and you know, well, I'll get into that later. There is never a Jezebel without an Ahab. Women are reactors and men are actors. Amen. So we're, we have the leading role. The women have the supporting role. Does that make sense? The supporting role plays off the lead role. The lead role takes command of the performance. Amen. And the supporting role supports the lead role. You see how I did that? That was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't practice that. But it did. But that's the truth. That's how God designed it. So when the supporting role person, when she takes the lead role, there's only one other role for the man to take. It can't be but one leader. Amen. Yeah. Anything with two heads is an abomination. Ain't no two-headed animal. Nobody got a two-headed pet. You kill that thing. <laughs> Amen. Two-headed dog. That's old Re book of revelations. Now, you got a book of revelations dog in your house. A portal to hell is in your backyard. But women are reactors and men are actors. When constant reminders are needed, when you got to constantly enforce your leadership, to her as to who is in charge or why authority is not recognized then it's probably a sign of bad leadership past or present I say past or present because I don't know how she was raised but when you dated her you should have checked that out amen. amen you may have married somebody that was raised in a way where they don't recognize authority right, right? But it's probably a sign of bad leadership. How did you handle that situation? Wives and children will in most cases submit when there is good leadership. Amen? Amen? Amen. Why? They will submit when the leadership is right. The Bible says in Luke 11 and 21, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are what? In peace. In peace. So a lot of people, we're raised in dysfunction now, like more often than not. Most people are victims of some kind of dysfunction. So when you start coming together, this is for the single brothers in here. When you start coming together with women, you got to take all that into account. Who you are marrying, how she was raised. Is it going to work? Amen. Because sometimes they'll put on a show to get to the finish line. I mean, once they break the tape, you wake up the next day, her head spinning around. And you wondering what happened. But let me tell you something. We have something special with the Holy Ghost. God is not going to let anybody pull the wool over your eyes if you feel with the Holy Ghost. Some things he said, no man has to even teach you. Because the Holy Ghost is going to show you. If you can be patient. Amen. Don't be in a hurry to marry her so you can hit it. You got to be patient. Let that thing play out so you can let God show you what you need to see. Amen. Or you'll wake up one day. <laughs> this ain't who I married. Pastor. Can you no, that you wanted some too bad. You should have dealt with that issue first. 
I know I'm preaching. I tell the truth raw and uncut on video. I mean, because it's the truth. You don't need to be in here playing no games with y'all. Amen. Yeah. But wives and children, in most cases, they're going to submit when there is good leadership. Nobody starts out a good leader. Nobody starts out a good leader. Amen. Leaders are made through adversity and time. The application of instruction, heeding the voice of counsel. That's how leaders be. Nobody woke up a leader. No, we all sucked at it initially. Amen. And God had to let us go through some things so we could learn some things, so we could implement some things. And that's what makes a good leader. And that's what your wife is watching. She don't need you to be perfect. She's watching your progression to perfection. Yeah. She'll fall in love with the journey. If it look like it's going somewhere. Am I telling the truth, Elder? She'll fall in love with the journey. <laughs> if it look like it's going somewhere. Man, I'm preaching at this place. That's okay. Let me keep going. Amen. A woman is usually convinced of male fortitude by the decisions that her man makes. So your fortitude is going to show by the decisions you make. Speaking it doesn't do it. Just saying don't do it for a woman. Woman ain't like a man. Folk can say stuff and we'll take them for their word. Well, he said. <laughs> oh, that's the lionest liar of all liars. Oh, really? Well, but he looked sincere when he said it. You know, women do not function that way. Uh-uh. You got to show her. Speaking it doesn't do it. It must be walked out and proven over time. Amen? Over time. Women will naturally submit to strong men or a strong man as long as his strength is real and not just talk. Amen. Amen. Don't talk strong. Be strong. Amen. Don't just talk it. When it's real, it never has to be stated. 1 Timothy 3 and 4, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. These are the requirements of a servant of the Lord. And we're all servants of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we got to rule our own houses and rule them well. That don't mean you're perfect. And that don't mean you're going to do everything right. But when you miss, you'll get back and fix it. You'll make it right. Amen? I mean, now that's some yelling right there. She done dented his head. <laughs> Gosh. Ooh. Better hope she don't bite him. <laughs> you may be a victim of her upbringing. Can I say that again? You may be a victim of her upbringing. Yeah, she could have been conditioned to be contrary before you ever came into the picture. Yeah, you're a victim of her upbringing. In these cases, you must pray and seek God for a pathway of change for her. Amen? Amen? Yeah, you married her, so you seek God. The will of a contentious woman is hard to break. It's hard to break. Hard to break. I wish I could tell you that it can always be broken. Sometimes it can't. Depends on the damage that was done in her upbringing. 
I believe God can save, deliver, and set anybody free, but I also believe somebody's going to hell. <laughs> Some folks are going to hell. They're not going to want what Jesus has to offer. Amen. I, you know, if, if that was hard for me to accept. Not that I thought everybody was going to be saved, but I at least thought that the message I'm preaching is going to work for everybody. I really believe that. I thought it would. No, it's not going to work for everybody. Because there are some folks whose will can't be broken. Because they don't want it to be broken. Amen. I preach, y'all. Y'all don't have to agree. The will of a contentious woman is hard to break. Pray and seek God for ways to shatter her preconceived idea of submission. I say pray and seek God because that's all you can do. Amen. And that's what you have to do. Pray and seek God. Proverbs 21 and 9, it is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop yes. than with a brawling woman in a wide house. <laughs> a wide house. What a word. The Bible. Bible said the corner of a roof versus a wide house. Because if she's like this, she got a wide mouth in a wide house. I'm going to the roof. Solomon said that. Amen. Better to dwell in the corner of the housetop. Not even the whole roof. The corner of the roof. Behind the chimney. Over where the squirrels be playing. It's better to be in that spot than in that big old house below. When you're in there with a brawling woman. You know what a brawling woman is? That's a woman that won't agree. All brawls start from a disagreement. If you agree, you ain't going to brawl. Am I telling the truth, boxers? Ain't no brawl if you're in agreement. Ain't no brawl. It's a brawl. The Bible tells men not to be, or preachers not to be brawlers. Looking for disagreements. Because a disagreement going to lead to the brawl. And if you're in a house with a brawling woman, amen. Get, get, welcome to the roof. Amen. Women will learn you and start gaslighting you. Ah, making you feel. Manipulative women will always stir up a man that has placed her as his advisor or guide. This is why it's impossible, according to the Lord, for a man to submit to the will of a woman. You can't do the will of God, submit it to the will of a woman. Amen. I'm sorry. It don't work that way. You see what happened in the garden. That was the start of something that would continue. Yes. You can't do it. Because women will learn you and start manipulating, stirring you up, and making you do things that you shouldn't do. Because she's advising you. You pl placed yourself under her. First Kings tells us there was none like unto Ahab, who did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom, who? Jezebel, Jezebel his wife. What'd she do? Stirred up. She stirred him up. She stirred him up. Yeah, manipulated him to get her way. This is why men must lead and get strength from other males that are leaders. You can't lead and get strength from men that aren't leaders. You can't lead and get strength from women. You got to lead and get strength from other males. A man is doomed in the company of women. Isaiah 4 and 1, and this is the Message Bible translation, but I love the way it says it. It says, that will be the day when seven women will gang up on one man. This is talking about now. And say, we'll take care of ourselves, get our own food and clothes. We're going to be bosses and independent. Just give us a child, make us pregnant, so we will have something to live for. <laughs> Did the Bible just not predict the erasing of men? The 
Yeah. That will be the day. Gang up on one man. So we only need you for one thing. Mm. Confiding in and spending time with female friends is dangerous for any man. Oh. You trying to do something that many have tried and failed. You can't do it. Hear heed the voice of your pastor. It's impossible. It can never happen in this life or the next. Don't work. <laughs> Don't work. It don't work. You confide in it. Oh, God. Help him, Lord. Confide in it. Look at it. <laughs> confide in it. Just confide. And man, a woman don't need lessons. She don't need nobody to train her. She don't need nobody to teach her how to do this right here. What she doing? They don't, it's, it's automatic. It's, they born, it's just, it's in them. It's in them. And so once you go to telling stuff and they turn their head like that, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. That is the head turn. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Don't learn the hard way, brothers. Listen to your pastor. Amen. Don't learn. Don't listen to your pastor now. Amen. Don't work. Can't do it. No. Because you start confiding and spending time with them. Mm. But here's the problem. When we grow up under dominant women, we usually prefer to talk and deal with women. Yeah, so if the woman was strong in your home, stronger than your daddy, you know, a lot of us may have grown up with a father that was just quiet. He, he felt like I pay the bills, I, you know, I, I work, so, you know, I'm just quiet. He don't hardly talk, whatever. And your mama's the vocal one, and you always saw her talking, and she's the one you know you're confiding in and she's the one you're talking to and all those things then you grow up you know you get older you think that that's a natural thing for you to just easily talk to women about your problems at home and it's not it's an abomination it's an aberration amen and then it is a porthole into another dimension the dimension of hell where you will be skinned alive and burned don't do it no, you can't do it. It don't work. Mm -mm. Nope, because women are too manipulative. There's just no way. And it's not a bad thing that women are like that. They're made that way to be nurturers for the children. So they're made to troubleshoot, figure out without, you know, n with nonverbal communications. They don't have to be said. They can sense. Because in order to raise a child and nourish a child, you got to sense. Your, your, your wife ever left a little, just an infant with you? And they start crying. You don't know. They start peeing and you don't know. And they just, you just don't know. You turn it all around and looking at the front and the back, like, what, what is this? How does this work? And she'll just come take him, get him here. He's hungry. Well, get him here. I mean, they just know. Well, that same intuition that gives them the ability to do that can be misused too. Because when you see the head turn, that's she, she, she didn't sense a way in. She's she listening and she just, okay, yeah, yo, so, so I, if I get him to talk, he's going to tell me too much. Can I preach? I thought y'all came for the truth. Somebody, this is just too hard. Yeah. Yeah, so. Women will usually support us and be kinder toward us than men. But women always want more than a friendship. Can I say that again? They always want more than a friendship. Yeah. If, if God made the man to give the identity to the woman, a lot of times the woman just wants identity. She wants to feel like there's a man interested in her. That'll give her identity. Yeah, she's trying to identify. Man, I'm preaching. That's okay. Yeah. 
They always want more. Women use these types of relationships to feel secure. And it will usually lead to desire. Proverbs 7 to 26. For she hath cast down many wounded. You didn't hear that. I'm going to say it again. And I want you to really think about what Solomon just said. She has cast down many wounded. She cast them down. So she's lifting him up, listening to his wounds, only to <laughs> cast them down. <laughs> yeah, he was wounded before she cast him down. That's why he was talking. Texting and inboxing and... Yeah. She has cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Okay, you in hell. You mean there's another level? <laughs> My, what kind of woman is this? There's another level in hell? Replace females with strong males in your life. That's all you got to do. Make a list of them. Judy, going to be Jerry. <laughs> Wanda, going to be Willie. Just make a list and just write the name right next to them. I'm replacing all of y'all. <laughs> Whoever it is, replace them. I don't care if they childhood friends and they helped you back when you, oh, no, nah, it don't matter. Replace them with strong men. Never! Look at somebody and say never. Never! never. Look at somebody else and say never. never. Never! Look at somebody that ain't on your row and say never. Never confide in a woman other than your wife. I don't care. I don't want to... Uh, but my wife just won't talk to me, then you just shouldn't be talking. My wife, she just won't spend time with me, then be alone. I don't understand why folks for just a few minutes, a few days, a few weeks of happiness or pleasure think that it's going to last that way always. You're going to go through times in a marriage where it ain't going to be great. You're going to go through times where she don't want to spend time with you, don't even want to hear you talk. Boy, you're going to go through menopause one day. Can I be a witness? Do you understand? They don't know, Elder. They don't know. What? Them the trials of Job almost. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know what you got to go through. you don't know but you don't confide and tell somebody what your wife won't do and what she's not doing and how she's not being man chambers of death it's not chambers of death it's only one place for where that's going learn to trust men and confide in them as well Amen? Learn to confide in men. Now some men are women. So you don't tell them your business. They get mad at you one day, they go tell everybody. We ain't talking about them. We're talking about real men here. Real men. Real men. That act like men. Amen? And you know who they are. They're the ones that's not talking to everybody else's business. They talking to everybody else's business, they talking yours too. So we don't want nothing. We ain't talking about just punks trust men and confide in them as well proverbs 5 and 8 remove thy way far from her get away from her and come not nigh the door of her house amen now i'm hot again <laughs> y'all ain't hot y'all not preaching 
but remove thy way far from her, come not nigh to her door. The absence of fathers produces the lack of male fortitude, which is required to establish relationships with other men. So you have to have fortitude to establish relationships with other men. And when I say relationships, y'all know I ain't talking about no gay stuff. Okay, to establish relationships with other men. When we are raised by dominant women, we grow, you, we grow used to submitting to the authority of women. This causes us to shun male relationships and pursue emotional relationships with women because it's easier. We can laugh and hang out with men but never truly confide in them because we really do not trust men. And this is something that you got to pray for God to break off you. Distrust of men. Especially if you've been hurt by your father, you wasn't there, whatever the case. Break it off because that's a trap if you keep that because you're going to gravitate toward women. Amen? Amen. Or we can establish male relationships but feel inferior or carry covetousness in our hearts toward our friends. So you got male friends, but then you're jealous of them because they may progress or they may do things better or whatever. But man, won't, don't you want to be around that? Yeah. You don't want to be around no failures. Failure is going to teach you how to fail. I love people that are smarter than me. Amen. I, man, please. I've got a Rolodex full of, boy. If I ever went on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and had to phone a friend, I'm winning. I got some friends I can call and I'm going to win. Yeah. I want to be around those, you know, I don't want to be around no weak folk. Stupid people. Yeah, so don't feel inferior. Ask God, why am I feeling inferior? God's going to show you your upbringing, something that happened to you, something that, whatever it is, and you deal with that because you shouldn't feel inferior in the company of brothers. Amen? We should feel like brothers. Not Cain and Abel, but brothers. Amen? That's a, those, they were natural brothers, biological brothers. And one of them was so jealous, he killed the other. So we don't want that spirit. We want to make sure, why, ask the Lord, why do I feel inferior around other men? Why do I feel weak? Why am I coveting them? Why am I wishing I was there? Why am I wishing I had what they had? All of those things. You got to deal with all of that or you will isolate yourself and you'll never have anyone in your life to help you produce. Amen. You're not going to produce on your own. Amen. You need someone in your life to help your production. Someone there to cheer you on. Someone there in your corner to push you. Someone there to pick you up when you fall. The Bible said two are better than one. If you're by yourself and you fall, who's going to get you out the ditch? Yeah, and if you don't have people around, guess who's your best friend? Your head. And we know where that's going. Man, that's the worst place ever. The worst place for you to be trying to figure it out on your own? This is dangerous because when we do not allow men to speak into us and sharpen us, we become fortitude fakes. We sound strong and appear strong, but deep down, we are very weak. It will show in our decision-making and emotional mannerisms. When we are overly emotionally moody, we use women to affirm our masculinity and strength. A man's strength is not proven by yelling at, controlling, and emotionally abusing or tearing down women. Amen. Amen. You don't tear down and emotionally abuse a woman to show your strength. Amen. When the Bible already says she's the weaker vessel. Yes, so that's not what women are for. A man's strength is not proven by that. Most men that do this avoid male relationships altogether because they are not strong at all. Yeah. It's hard to tell another man, man, yeah, you know. 
I beat Sally up last night. You know, most of us in here, we just gonna whip you. Oh yeah, so you beat up, you whoop Sally, huh? You know, you just start getting ready. You, Sally, so you fought Sally, huh? Yeah, that, that's who you fought? Okay. <laughs> yeah, ain't no man like that, go, so he stays isolated. He stays by himself because he's ashamed of his behavior. He don't have friends. He don't get close to nobody, nothing. He just stays that way. And his life is on a crash course. Amen. Amen. It's hard to be around a lot of men if you ain't on the up and up. Amen. Amen. Because we're going to ask questions. Uh, hey, bro. Your wife had a black eye. You didn't do that, did you? <laughs> yeah, you don't be hitting no woman, yelling at her and screaming and calling out her name and cussing at her and telling her you wish you had never married her. Man, what is wrong with you? And then coming in and act like you didn't do none of that? No, that's not how you prove your strength. Amen. But these same men, they avoid male relationships all together because they are not strong at all. Only real men, and I'm closing with this, only real men can bond with real men and forge lasting relationships that sharpen them and help them overcome their flaws. We must allow God to bring us strong men to bond with and help us to better ourselves. Amen? <laughs> Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall do what? Attain unto wise counsels. Amen? Amen. Amen.